In 1950, the race for DNA was on. Scientists around the world wanted to know what DNA looked like. And in England of the 1950s, a few scientists tried to do just that. Since 1869, we've already known what DNA is, thanks to other scientists. We know that DNA holds the information about who a person is. It's kind of like the blueprint of a house, but for people. Fast forward back to 1950s England. Maurice Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin worked in a lab to try to find the structure of DNA. What is the word structure? The structure is the many parts of something that's put together. So think again about a house. A structure of a house could be the beams and the different wood pieces that make it up. But Franklin and Wilkins weren't the only scientists trying to find the structure or makeup of DNA. James Watson and Francis Crick were doing the same thing in England in a different lab. Wilkins and Franklin were doing different experiments in their lab. They were taking x-ray pictures of DNA to try and see what it looked like. Rosalind Franklin did many experiments in the lab to try and figure this out. She wanted to help the world. And she also wrote different reports based on what she was finding. Watson and Crick were mostly reading other people's reports to try and figure out what it meant and find some clues to what DNA might have been made up of and what it looked like. One day, Rosalind was taking photos in Maurice Wilkins' lab. She was taking x-rays, kind of like the x-rays that you take when you go to a hospital and maybe break your leg. Many of the pictures weren't clear enough until finally one day, Franklin took a clear photo known as Exposure 51. It showed a pretty clear image of what DNA may look like, but it was only a small photo of a strand of DNA. So she still had to figure out what it all meant. And here's Exposure 51, that photo of a piece of DNA. Franklin studied this image that she took through an x-ray. She wrote many reports and even shared what she found with many other people. She was just a few steps away from figuring out what Exposure 51 meant. In 1953, Wilkins shared Rosalind Franklin's report with Watson and Crick. Watson and Crick, since they studied many reports on DNA, studied her report and based on her findings, based on what she studied and exposure 51 that Franklin took, they finally cracked the code and knew the structure of DNA. They knew what DNA was made up of. Watson and Crick created a model of what they thought DNA looked like and what the structure could be. They said it had a double helix model, which means there are two strands that wind around and around each other. Can you think of any times that you may have seen a double helix shape in your life? Many people think that a double helix looks similar to a staircase. In 1953, Watson and Crick shared a report that they made based on their model of DNA. They had many meetings and they were known as the people who finally won the race to find the structure of DNA. In all the reports, no one mentioned Rosalind Franklin and how she was the one who took that x-ray picture and was only a couple steps away from finding the structure. In 1962, Wilkins, Watson, and Crick won a Nobel Peace Prize for their work on finding the structure of DNA because it helped so many people in the world afterwards. Here's a picture of what a Nobel Peace Prize looks like but Rosalind Franklin was never noticed. She had passed away already and couldn't receive a prize because of that. In 1968, Watson created a book about how he and his colleagues discovered the structure of DNA, 
but he made some very mean comments about Rosalind Franklin. He said that she was very jealous and wasn't smart enough or talented enough to do the work herself. He said she was incompetent and would have never figured it out. Based on your context clues, what do you think incompetent means? It means that you're not able to do something successfully because you don't have the skills. Still, no one really knew how much Franklin did to help. So in 1975, Franklin's friend Anne Sire wrote another book, Sticking Up for Rosalind. She told about her contributions, the reports that Franklin made, and Exposure 51 that she found herself. Many people in the world now knew just how much Rosalind Franklin did to help our world. Thanks to Watson, Crick, Franklin, and Wilkins, we now know what DNA is made up of and it has helped our world since so much. It tells us everything we need to know about the human body. We now know what illnesses certain people might get. We now understand certain diseases like cancer. We can create more medicines and vaccines for illnesses. And we can also start to learn where we came from because DNA once again tells us how every single person was created, what they're made up of, and tells us more about them. Luckily, Franklin has now been noticed for her work in science. She's a scientist just like the other three men. What would you do if you were in a situation like this? What would you do if someone was noticing something great that you did, like helping a friend, but you couldn't have done it without the help of another friend? Would you say something or take the credit all for yourself? Pause the video here to talk about it. What would you do if you heard people saying something very rude and nasty about a friend? Would you let them say those things or would you try to do something about it? Pause the video here to talk about it. Talk about other scenarios where you might have to make a hard choice. 